This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, who actually controls Bitcoin? We often hear FUD like this, that the U.S. government's about to take over Bitcoin, or that the Bitcoin spot ETFs and MicroStrategy have somehow ruined Bitcoin because now Bitcoin is controlled by corporations, or that BlackRock is going to fork Bitcoin and rug users, or that Bitcoin was hijacked back in 2017. Now, when people say things like this, they're really just displaying their own ignorance about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin consensus works. So we're going to be talking about Bitcoin consensus today. What's consensus? Roughly defined Bitcoin consensus is just the agreement, the social agreement, the basic rules that participants in the Bitcoin system agree on. Things they agree on, like the 21 million coin max supply cap, what the characteristics of a valid block are, the fact that Bitcoin runs on proof of work, SHA-256, mining, these sort of things. Now, Bitcoin consensus, as we said in the last video, is quite hard. And that's because Bitcoin is a globally distributed system without a central authority, CEO, or leader. So Bitcoin does not have a living active founder like Vitalik Buterin for Ethereum or Charles Hoskinson for Cardano. One of these living active founders who calls the shots, tells everyone what the development roadmap looks like, and then carefully plans one hard fork after another. By contrast, Bitcoin is very, very difficult to change. And that's actually a feature, not a bug, as we mentioned at the end of the last video, because a software protocol or system that's easy to change is a software protocol that can be easily attacked. So if it were easy to increase Bitcoin's max supply or move Bitcoin to proof of stake, it would not be the digital gold that so many of us rely on to store our life savings. Now, who are the major participants in the Bitcoin consensus? And this analysis draws heavily on analysis that I first heard from Andreas Antonopoulos many years back, as well as Lynn Alden and Steve Lee have done some interesting work recently on this GitHub page and project, which is an open source project. They go through and do a very nice job of analyzing how Bitcoin consensus works. There's a lot to cover here, so we're really just gonna be skimming the surface in today's video. If you're finding this video helpful so far, just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, leave a like, comment, question, suggestion for future video. Share this video with a friend or family member. Now, who are the participants in the Bitcoin consensus? Of course, we have hodlers, we have people who own Bitcoin and hold Bitcoin. We have economic nodes, people who run Bitcoin nodes and actually use those nodes to make Bitcoin transactions. If you're running a node but not using it actively for your own transactions, it doesn't really make that much of a difference for the network. We also have Bitcoin hashers or people who run mining rigs, often called Bitcoin miners, but we need to distinguish them, of course, from Bitcoin mining pools where these hashers or miners point their hash. We have the Bitcoin core devs. We have the Bitcoin knots devs. These are different implementations of the Bitcoin consensus of the basic software. We have Bitcoin app devs, for example, uh, soft software wallet makers and hardware wallet makers. Then we have the Bitcoin exchanges slash crypto exchanges. We also have what you might call Bitcoin podcasters, influencers, educators, people who try to have an impact on the general consensus through either their education or their podcasts. You can participate in multiple categories as well. For example, I'm a Bitcoin hodler. I'm also an economic node runner. I'm a Bitcoin hasher miner, and I'm also a Bitcoin educator. Now, the thing about Bitcoin consensus is that one of these groups cannot unilaterally impose changes to the Bitcoin protocol on everyone else. For example, if Bitcoin miners and mining pools decide to increase Bitcoin's maximum supply beyond the 21 million coins, and Bitcoin nodes did not want to go along with that change as an economic node runner, I certainly would not want to increase the maximum supply because it would basically dilute my current holdings of Bitcoin. So if we did not want to go along with that change, Bitcoin node operators like myself will not accept these new blocks and will not add them to our individual versions of the blockchain. And that means that miners will not be paid a block reward after 100 blocks and will have burnt their electricity in vain mining these blocks that are not valid blocks. And then if Bitcoin exchanges or crypto exchanges won't accept this new version of Bitcoin that has a supply greater than 21 million coins, then Bitcoin miners and mining pools will be unable to exchange this new version of Bitcoin for fiat money and thus will be unable to pay their electricity bills. So you can see here how all the participants in Bitcoin consensus, the exchanges, the node operators, the miners, etc., need to agree on what version of Bitcoin they're running. 
if miners want to change Bitcoin, they really need Bitcoin nodes and exchanges and probably educators and influencers to get on board. Now, what power do holders of BTC itself have in this consensus? They have a very important power, which is if there is a fork, holders of Bitcoin can decide which side of the fork to keep and which side of the fork to sell. So, for example, when Bcash, BCH forked away from Bitcoin, a holder of 10 Bitcoin was able to claim a free 10 BCH Bcash and then could decide whether to sell the BTC, sell the BCH, or keep both. And Bitcoin BTC was declared the winner by the market. More people who are holding BCH than people who are holding BTC. The BCH holders dumped and bought more BTC, and that's why this chart has been going down, down, down as BTC strengthens. So when Roger Bear comes out and writes a book and tells you that Bitcoin was hijacked, Bitcoin was not hijacked. Bitcoin is not an airplane with a pilot that can be hijacked. It's a globally distributed system and consensus, and you can't hijack a decentralized system since there's no centralized cockpit that you can take over. So Bitcoin was not hijacked. What in fact happened is that Roger Ver and Bcash were on the wrong side of consensus. They lost the block size wars fair and square, and now they're just bitter losers who are constantly muddy in the water for newcomers, which is unfortunate. Corporate interests at about the same time also failed to take over Bitcoin in 2017 when it came to the New York Agreement and SegWit 2x. This is the document, Bitcoin Scaling Agreement at Consensus 2017. They wanted to do a hard fork and double the size of Bitcoin blocks. And this group, the signatories of the New York Agreement, had an incredible a number of participants and powerful participants. So this agreement was signed by 58 companies in 22 countries. 83% of the Bitcoin network of the hash was on board with this. 5.1 billion US dollar monthly on-chain transaction volume, people who did that much, and 20.5 million Bitcoin wallets. Groups that signed the New York agreement included Barry Silbert of DCG and the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, Coinbase and Brian Armstrong, who's been a trader forever, Bitmain and Jihan Wu, Bitcoin.com and Roger Ver. And so you had basically the biggest miners, the biggest exchange, and the biggest market participants all in favor of increasing the block size. They came in and said something equivalent of the adults are running the show now. All Bitcoin core devs are fired. We're bringing in our serious corporate devs, things like this. And guess what happened? Basically, they were forced to back down. They lost the signatories to the Bitcoin, to the New York agreement lost because Bitcoin plebs and node operators refused to go along with their corporate plans. So Segwit2x was shelved. And as this article says, the highly contentious hard fork Segwit2x was recently called off due to a lack of community consensus. There's that word consensus again. The proposed change was considered by some to be an upgrade to Bitcoin, was a second part of the New York agreement scaling plan, and would have increased the base block size to two megabytes. But because of Bitcoin plebs and node operators, Brian Armstrong, Jihan Wu, Roger Bear, Barry Silbert, all these people were forced to back down. So this is just an introduction to consensus and how it works. If this interests you, we can cover it in later videos. There are many different participants. There are many different things that can happen with consensus. But I think it's important to understand that, first of all, and most importantly, Bitcoin is this decentralized consensus and it's very, very difficult to change. It can't be unilaterally changed by a government, by a group like BlackRock, or by anyone else. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.